at ACTS looked at how we can do more for the child, how we can make the child more independent, how we can make the child be up to date with what's uh, going on in the world and to make the learning relevant to the child's life. What I like is, you know, they're not just building this project and just leaving it out there. When you, like, I attended the exhibition and um, we have several, you know, small exhibitions sometimes in school. So when you go up to them, they like confidently stand up and say, ma'am, can I tell you about my project? And they so confidently speak with such beautiful language. Integrated STEM programs such as robotics, coding, and AI for schools was something new way back in 2017 and 18. Schools have after-school program or a club activity for anything away from academics. However, one of the early adopters was ACT Secondary School, which is situated in Electronic City of Bangalore. Today, I have an opportunity to discuss with Mrs. Anupa, the director of the school. First and foremost, Mrs. Anupa, congratulations on the Silver Jubilee celebration of ACT Secondary School. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Sanpa, I would like to understand, like it was in 2018 when the Act School integrated a STEM education program for grade one through grade nine from QTP Robotics, where several schools looked at such programs as an after-school program. What led to this decision? Thank you for that question. It's, it helps us think as to why we, we do what we do. When I think about ACTS, um, it was founded by my dad. He was very much into education and uh, theology and philosophy and so many things. And he believed that, you know, education should be all about, you know, holistically. So it's not just, uh, you know, a textbook, not just the blackboard, not just exams, but it's about holistically bringing up the child so that the child will be able to survive and thrive in the world that they go out into. So we all know that if you just go by the textbook, that child will not survive. So we've always kind of at ACTS looked at how we can, you know, do more for the child, how we can make the child more independent, how we can make the child be up to date with what's uh, going on in the world and to make the learning relevant to the child's life. So I think along the way, you know, when everyone started talking about STEM and STEAM and all sorts of things, we didn't know, of course, what it was all about, but we read up and my dad was always up to date with so many things. So thanks to him, the rest of us also had to keep up. And I think it was around that time when we uh, came across you. I, I should also mention that our CEO, uh, my brother, um, his children had been introduced to robo robotics in their school and so he came back also all excited and saying you know we th this is something that we should introduce in in our school as well and that was around the time when we met you and um, your um, program seemed to fit into what we were were looking at you were also integrating it into real life scenarios you know it was not just a separate standalone kind of program but i can see over the years that our children are making you know, projects that are relevant to their daily lives. I think there were so many factors in why we decided to do this. And I think there has been no looking back ever since. Sharing um, an insight on how it began. But I also understand for this academic year of 20 to 23, um, the school is experimenting with a school managed STEM integrated program, which is again supported by KTPI Robotics, where the difference is the school teachers are trained in this and to facilitate the program. Uh, and this is very experimental for uh, QTP Robotics as well as for the school. Uh, were there any parameters or thoughts in making this decision because there's a delta shift which is happening? Yeah, so to be honest, you know, when COVID hit and um, I think everyone was kind of shaken up uh, emotionally, financially as well. And um, so I, I, we did put the robotics program on hold during that time. And um, when we were thinking of opening up and, you know, going back, a uh, full blast into what used to happen pre-COVID. I think that's when you you guys were also, you know, thinking about how you could help schools that were struggling, which I really appreciate that. And so this model seemed uh, more financially viable for us. And, um, you know, now when I look at it, having uh, our own teachers trained by you and, uh, uh, you know, part of our school as well. I think it has given us also, I mean, I think it has brought, made the relationship between uh, QTPI and the school, I think a little stronger 
So it's no more like you are just this external program that comes in and goes out, but you are kind of a part of the school now in 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 a in a deeper way because you have trained our teachers, you know. So I think there's more ownership. The main reason, if I think about it, was financially, and uh, this seemed like would work at that time when we thought about it. Okay, I'm I'm sure there's a check and balance, and things are working very well on both end. Um, and making sure that it functioning as good as it was expected to be. Uh, yes. I also understand school had a, a robotics exhibition a while ago in the last uh, end of the fag end of the year 22. How has been the response from the students and parents on this program? I think the response has been great. Absolutely great. I mean, parents are so excited to see their students, you know, uh, explaining their projects. So what I like is, you know, they're not just building this project and just leaving it out there. When you, like, I attended the exhibition and um, we have several, you know, small exhibitions sometimes in school. So when you go up to them, they like confidently stand up and say, ma'am, can I tell you about my project? And they so confidently speak with such beautiful language and helps a lay person like me who doesn't know anything about coding and robotics, helps me understand how they built it why they built it, you know, and how it can function, and also gives us a chance to try it out. So I think the response has been great. It is great to see um, how this program has made our kids more confident as well, you know, because it's not just them, you know, these nerds or geeks sitting and, and making stuff. You know, some of them can be so... Um, socially awkward you know they're so good at building stuff but they may not be able to uh, you know talk to the audience but it's been great to see how our kids um, explaining uh, so excitedly about their projects and I also want to add at this point that um, we had some Swedish visitors uh, that came to our school and they walked around the school and they also happened to visit the robotics lab and there were some students there who explained their work and us, the Swedish team was so impressed with you know the robotics program and what the kids were doing and how they explained themselves so I just wanted to add that. No, wonderful to hear uh, you know a lot of people are benefited out of this program and it is making an impact and uh, a difference to the lives of the children. Uh, I also understand that there are schools which uh, have taken this an after school activity so on hindsight I'm trying to understand like was it um, a right decision for you to see it as an integrated program rather than an after school program. Yes, yes, because when you use the word integrated, that's part of the vision and mission of our organization. And my dad, uh, the founder of the organization, used to talk a lot about integrated learning. So integrating it into our school system, I think, has been the best decision because I think when you look at it as a uh, after school program, again, it will be just a separate program that may be optional and maybe not all students will sign up for because, you know, maybe, you know, there's no transport or, uh, you know, it's an extra cost or whatever. But this way, when it's integrated into it, yes, it becomes compulsory, but because it's compulsory and because it's part of the, in the timetable and, you know, it's like a, you know, a subject on its own kind of, um, I think the students are forced to attend, but then in the end, it works out for them. Yeah. So I think it's been a great decision that we integrated it into the school system. Okay, uh, I would like to take a final question, which you have partially answered. Um, uh, like integrated programs are, uh, the one of the projects from integrated programs are to benefit kids for 21st century skills. Uh, did you see or did you hear from teachers or did you come across people talking about this reflection of 21st century skills in kids? Yeah, absolutely. So when I hear the term 21st century skills, I think of the, the words creativity, you know, critical thinking and decision making and communication and things like that. And we see all that coming through the robotics program. Creativity as for them building the program, how they communicate, how and why they built their project and uh, critical thinking, you know, while they're making their um, projects. So, so yes, absolutely. I think it has, it really ties in with 21st century skills. Okay, wonderful, ma'am. Thanks for uh, inputs and sharing your thoughts on the STEM program at Act Secondary School, Bangalore. Uh, and I would like to again congratulate you on the Silver Jubilee celebration of the school. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. God bless you. Thank you.
Thanks so much. Thank you.